Why would you do that? What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we're carrying on with the Jixit. So um, if you saw the last video, we basically got it down to a rolling chassis, which is all cool. Um, there are still a couple of bits and pieces I want to pull off. Uh, chain needs to come off. It's got to come off anyway. I need to get the swing arm out and the frames are all going to have to be powder coated again once um, we finish up with the welding and various other bits and pieces. So it's all got to go. I might as well pull it off anyway. The other thing is the carburetors. Um, they need to go. At some point they're going to go through the ultrasonic bath, get all cleaned up and get all the goo and everything, muck and rubbish and stuff out of them. Um, but in, at, at the moment they're just in the way. So I'm going to get those off as well. Um, I'm taking the chain, I think the chain is actually quite new. Uh, it, it doesn't look nasty by any means. Um, and I've, uh, I've got a, where is it? What have I done with it? Oh yeah, I've got a split link, another split link for it. Um, I always tend to have a, a few knocking around in the toolbox anyway. So we're just going to remove the split link. Uh, that actually joins the whole chain together. And then we can just stick another one in and reuse the old chain. That's fine. It's not a problem. We'll take it off, bag it up, keep it safe. Um, and yeah, it should be okay. Um, I think he's going to be running different pod filters. And these are just, I mean, they serve a the purpose, but there's nicer ones out there. Uh, he's talking about going for the, um, it's like one filter that covers two intakes. I don't know. I've not seen them. Anyway, hopefully steve is going to be up this weekend. So um, he'll be able to jump in and give me a hand. We'll probably end up getting the engine out this weekend as well, which will be good because then I can start on the fabrication. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the plan. Um, this episode is going to be filmed over a few days. Uh, basically, there's some bits and pieces I need to be getting on within the workshop. So as I'm waiting for stuff to do, um, I'll probably jump in and do the odd bit or whatever on this. Splice it all together and that'll be the video at the end of the week. I'm still trying to get out one video a week um, just to keep things interesting and get a regular posting going. Um, so you're going to see a couple of things. One, you'll see more of my t-shirts. This one's really old actually. It's got holes everywhere. That'll be grinding. Um, and also you'll see a miraculous recovery to my man flu which I'm still suffering with. This is actually the, the, the day after my last day of filming. So I'm still bunged up. Um, I sound awful, but you know, we'll get through it. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Right, so first things first, chain. Uh, oh. There we go. Okay, so chain. <clears throat> I don't know if this is an X ring or an O ring or whatever. I haven't got a clue. Um, however, somewhere in here there should be. Oh, he's got one of them. They're nasty. Right. Uh, this is, is one of those split links where it's got like a clip that um, basically you put the split link in, put the facing plate on. The ones that I really like are the rivet type. Um, I Personally, I just think they're so much better. Um, back in my racing days, there was a few guys that used to use this sort, which has like a little, I don't know what it is, it's a clip which um, goes around and it, it, it clips on the two pins that come through. Um, but when we was racing, people used to call you all sorts if you use one of these, purely because that clip comes off. Um, I know racing is a different application. Um, you know, things are under a lot more load and everything else. Um, at least he's got the clip on the right way around. <laughs> um, yeah, these I, I don't really like these things. 
Um, the one that I've got is is the rivet type. So you need. I've got a tool up there, which isn't great. None of my tools are awesome, um, but it's a chain breaker and rivet tool. And basically, you can rivet it instead of having this little clip, and it's so much better. Um, takes a little bit of maybe to get used to, but yeah, it's just better. Why wouldn't we go for better? So with this thing, um, bum, bum, bum. There go. right. So with these. It's just a case of getting the clip off, which again is oh, okay. Right, so you have this little clip. I um, don't know if you can see that, but it's a little clip that goes over the two pins that stick through. Um, I just don't like this. I know it probably doesn't matter. I oh, know they're probably just as good as the other bits, other styles that you can get, but I just, I just don't think they're as good. Um, let's get the plate off. Bearings. And this should just pop out. It's an actually split link. Um, and you can see that, that clip just goes in these, there's two little grooves. So obviously the, the plate goes on and then this stupid little clip goes in and it kind of locates in those two grooves and it's supposed to keep it all together. I don't like them. I never have. So it's going to have to suffer with a riveted type. Um, chain does look quite good actually. There's loads of lube on it which is nice. Um, I will check for Steve how many miles this is done, how long he's had it, but considering he was all about changing the chain when he was building the bike, and he's only just finished it, um, it's, it's, it hasn't seen any use at all. It's a 520 chain as well. Um, the 520 chain refers to the, the width of it. Um, we used to run 520s on the race bikes. I think. I'm not sure if this would be a 530 or 535, but certainly a bigger chain than this anyway. Um, but they're just lighter because they're narrower gauge, basically. It does look quite good. There's a few little bits of surface, kind of smoo and goo and crap and stuff. But it's not bad. Um, He's lubed it up with that wax stuff. Doesn't feel gritty or anything. I think it just needs a bit of a clean and a proper lube up. And uh, we go with that. I am going to put his strip link in the bag. Just because he might decide, no, I want to use that. He's going to some of these earrings and probably need to be changed anyway. That's up to Steve, though. He can do what he wants on this. Um, I just prefer the others. My choice. Okay, so, carbs. Um, I suppose he wants to take the pod filters off. <sighs> okay, so this is interesting. Um, the hand controls had the uh, little lever to operate the choke and this here is the choke. You see it just moves along, it's nice and free, which is good. Um, but there's no cable to it, so basically the lever didn't do anything. I um, don't really understand why you wouldn't want a choke, but he didn't have one on it. Um, I'm going to make the suggestion that we reinstate it. Just because I think it's a good idea. Ooh. Right. So, um, this is the first pod filter that I've taken off. 
um, they are, what are they? Ram Air, which is, it's basically just foam. There's no core to it or structure to keep it, you know, so it can keep it safe or anything. Fix on with just a Jubilee clip, which is fine, you can do that, that's not a problem. Um, but then if you look at the, the actual unit itself, it's all split and perished. And he must have known about it because he's put tape around it. Let's see where, there we go. So this is just insulation tape. <laughs> right, I don't know what's going on here. I am going to ask him. But yeah, junk. Utter junk. Um, let's get the rest of them off. I wonder if they're all like that. Now that one doesn't even have a clip on it. Um, these two do. Get to them on the other side. This one's been taped as well. Again, held on with the Jubilee clip um, and tape. And it's split as well. They're just rubbish. Why, why would you put up with that? It may well be that whilst he's been um, building the bike, this is all just like a temporary thing. Oh, that one doesn't have any tape on. And it's intact. Oh, no, it's not. It's totally split. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, it may just be that as the build's gone on, he just needed to throw a filter on it just to try it and tune it and do whatever needed to get into the engine to get it to run with the pod fills. But those are just wonderful. Um... I'm going to keep these to one side because Steve-O needs to answer some questions. But they are shocking. Right. So. Um, okay, so that's the throttle cable. One question I did have is, was this supposed to have an open and closed cable? Um, I'm not sure on the, uh, the band bits. Oh no, wrong one. But older bikes, they only ever had one cable. Um, it kind of came into being later on to have uh, an open and a, and, and a close. Oh, moves free. Some of these screws are fairly chewed up as well. That's one thing I never knew, um, and you tend to find out just through watching a whole load of YouTube channels. Dow Air screwdrivers? Never heard of them. I just thought they were all Phillips. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. Um, oh, Japanese bike. It's all JIS. Jap was it Jap Japanese and? was it? Industrial Standard or something like that. Um, I was watching um, Andy Gerding's channel, um, Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Love that channel, it's so good. Um, and he's one that, that did mention it. He goes on about it a lot actually. But it's valid, it's true. Um, Phillips screwdrivers aren't the best fit for some of these screws. Whereas the JIS one, just, it just works. It's great. These ones are, again, 
just a budget one but the nice thing about this is it's got a core that goes all the way through to a solid bit on the end that you can stick the socket on and because it's one solid bar if you need to tap it to loosen it stop it, you can do um, so with a little bit of luck And you should just pull off. Okay. So, carbs. Off. Yeah. Give us a few more. Okay. So, there's fuel. It goes into. Ooh. What's that? Um, I'm not sure if you can see this, but that does not look good. It's been welded on for some reason. Oh my god. There's a nut. How is that? Oh, still fueling this. I need to drain these out properly. What have they done? So here's the throttle assembly. Yeah, so it looks like it does only have one cable to open it. Um, that goes. Yeah, so there's only the one cable. What have they done there? It's the adjuster. Oh. Why would you do that? I need to. I need to read up on these carbs. Carbs aren't my strong point. It's one of the things um, I want to get more involved in. I have a broken tooth. Awesome. Right, so, but this adjuster looks like it's just opening the, the butterflies. So it's like an idle, idle adjustment, really. Um, however, on the end of the, there, there is a bolt there, which goes through and it pushes on the um, assembly at the back here. But then there's another nut, sorry, another bolt, which has been welded to the adjuster with a nut that's been sort of threaded on and then welded to the bolt that they've just welded on there. And that's what the adjuster is. Why would someone do that? Oh, right, okay. Well, they're off. They do need a damn good clean. We also need to drain the fuel out of them because at the minute it's going all over my bench, which is not the best thing. But we will keep these to one side. Um, and it gives us a couple more questions to ask Steve. <laughs> yeah. He would not have done that. I know Steve. He's. He. I mean, some of the stuff that we're coming across on the bike, I can understand because it would be. Yeah, if these for example, um, I'm imagining he just threw these on there to try and get it to run, but didn't want to run it without a filter. So that I can understand. Nasty as they are, they would serve a purpose. And there's a few, you know, maybe with the wiring, it's just just a case of like a quick fix, and it's either been forgotten about or 
it was done as a as a makeshift measure just for a purpose of getting the thing running and a temporary measure has a habit of becoming a permanent fixture as we know so some of that stuff I, I do appreciate and understand don't understand that at all why would you not just get another bolt or an adjuster and put it in why would you go to all the trouble of welding another bolt and then another nut on the end of it that just does not make any sense it looks awful I know it's buried and you're never going to see it but that's nasty um, the carbs themselves don't look bad actually they should clean up really really well um, yes They do look out of tune though because some of the butterflies have a much larger gap at the bottom than the others do. So I don't think these carbs have ever been tuned up. And there is some crap in there as well. Bits of stuff. Right, well they're all getting cleaned up anyway so not a problem. Yes, more interest. Okay. Another day. Another t-shirt. Right. Um, that's scrubby. Right, so what I want to do here is uh, I just want to drain the carbs. <clears throat> right, so the carbs have still got fuel in them. Um, what's the best way to explain this? Fuel, even if it's just in a jerry can, Forget being in a car or a bike or anything else. Um, because of the, um, the the contents of it, what it's actually made up of, it goes off really quick, which sounds like a stupid thing. Um, but it's true. A couple of I used to work for, we used to do um, like uh, garden machinery. And one of the biggest causes of complaint was... Um, that somebody puts their lawnmower away for winter when you're not going to cut the grass and then when you come to use it in the spring because your grass has just gone mental you can't get the thing started the only trouble is they put it away with fuel in um, and what's happened is that the, the fuel soaked up all the moisture from the air and it actually causes it to separate it just turns into this goo and it is horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. Um, they got. I'll see if I can dig the picture out. They had a jam jar which they just left in the corner of the workshop um, with some fuel in it. And after 30 days, it separated out into two distinct layers. Um, the watery, gloopy, mucky, horrible, nasty stuff that it's soaked up from the air obviously goes to the bottom because it all floats on top of water. Um, and that won't go through um, carbs and stuff. <laughs> it's sure ain't going to burn. You couldn't set it alight if you put a match to it. Um, and that's the reason. And it turns to like this varnish. It just blocks up jets and nasty. It's, oh, it's disgusting. It stinks as well. Um, and of course, it's all down to the customer. They're the one that put it away without taking the fuel out. So it's their problem to fix. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so I don't know how long these are going to sit here before we get round to putting them through the ultrasonic bath, cleaning them all up and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want any fuel left in these. Um, I don't want to have to deal with that. 
I think they were cleaned at one point. I mean, they certainly look in in reasonable shape. This is just a bit of grot. It looks like they've just been degreased. They haven't been properly cleaned up or anything. I don't think. I could be wrong. Um, but we're going to go through and do all that stuff anyway with the ultrasonic bath. All these are coming completely apart for a complete refurb. We've got that adjuster on the bottom to fix. Um, I just don't want to have to deal with um, nasty fuel in it as well. So on these, um, essentially there is, a, I'm not sure if you can see it, but on the bottom of each float bolt, this is the float bolt, diaphragm sits on the top here. Um, but on the bottom of the fuel, fuel bowl is like a, a drain spout, I suppose, and a, and a blanking bolt. So if we just undo this, which is tube to hell, we should get some, yeah, there we go. So there's the fuel sitting in the float bowls. So all I'm going to do is drain each of these off. So there's no fuel left in it, and this will take the fuel out of the entire carburetor. Just takes a little bit of time to run through. And then we won't run into that problem, which is awesome. Um, whilst we're on this, these carbs are very similar to um, a set that I saw online. Um, I've embarrassed him once, I'm going to embarrass him again. Andy Girding from Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Um, he he built himself a cafe racer. I'm, I'll put one of those links in, you know, that, with the thing that you can click on, and go and have a look at his playlist. He's a really, really, really nice guy. Um, I've messaged him a couple of times and he's been dead helpful. Um, and basically he did a project bike, a cafe racer, from an X, uh, XS 1100. I'm sure it's an XS. Um called Basket Case, which is really apt name actually, because if you see what he started out with, it was just a bag of nails. And he turned it into the most lovely bike, he really did, he went to town on it. Um, the guy has got a background in mechanical engineering. Um, I think he works, I don't know what he did before, but I think he currently works for a wine company, like looking after all the machines and the, I think I've, I could be wrong. I'm sure he'll correct me if I am. Um, but the boy knows his onions. He, he definitely knows what he's doing. Um, and he's obviously got years of experience working on bikes. Come on. Um, yeah, so um, part of his rebuild was to pull apart a set of uh, CV carbs, which is basically what these are. Essentially, there's a diaphragm that sits underneath here. The throttle um, will open the butterflies, um, and as you get the difference in pressure, then the diaphragm experiences a change in pressure either side, the needle moves up, and you get more fuel and all that stuff. Really, really good. And I never really understood carburetors until I saw that video. Um, he just explained it so, so, so well. And he's, he's got a bank of carburetors um, and he pulls them all apart and then he just whips out a piece of piece of paper and a sharpie and he explains the anatomy of a carburetor and how it all works um, you know to do with pilot circuits and enrichment circuits and what your main jets do and how you adjust it and you know, just everything um, and then he goes through the rebuild and setting the float levels and bench tuning it and it's just excellent all these videos are really really good thoroughly recommend if you're going to have a go at doing carbs have a look at that video series um you, you won't be sorry and even if your carburetors are slightly different at least you'll get the theory behind that um because carburetors are basically the same um it's just yeah different manufacturers make them very slightly differently but they still work in exactly the same way. So I'll throw a link in there. I'm sorry if I've embarrassed you, Andy. <laughs> and he's actually one of the reasons I'm doing this this video series um, and starting up the channel because he makes everything look so easy. 
um, I can tell you now it's lying because what looks like a five minute job in here takes a lot longer because you're mucking about with cameras and everything. Um, so he makes it look really easy, whereas I'm probably making it look really difficult. Come on. There we go. Work that one. Sweet. So yeah, but his, his bike looks absolutely stunning. And the cool thing is that he leaves good bits and bad bits in there as well. Things that go swimmingly well, they're all in there. Um, things that maybe has a few troubles with, um, like he went on a massive road trip and his bike actually let him, di let, let him down. But he leaves it in there, then he goes through the troubleshooting, finds out what it was, tells you and fixes it. And he shows you how he fixes it, which is, you know, that's real world stuff. That's going to happen to anybody. Um, I like the way he works as well. He takes care over stuff. He doesn't beat the crap out of anything. Right. He's got these bagged up. Safe and sound. There's bits off it, which is cool. Um, what have we got? What have we got? No. So, yeah, Andy's one of those guys that, um, when, I, when I first started um, getting interested in doing this sort of thing, I did what everybody does and just uh, did a search on YouTube. Project bikes, cafe races, bike build, this, that and the other, and his, his channel came up. And I got hit to it pretty quickly, actually, it's, it's, it is very entertaining. Um, there were an awful lot of channels that popped up that I couldn't say the same thing about. Um, if you look at some of them, that you know instantly the guy's a buffoon, hasn't got a clue what he's doing. And some people are going to put me in that camp, I get that, that's fine. I'm not a mechanic. Um, I mean, there, were, there was like one guy who was, well, I don't even know who it was, but he was, um, he was building a, building a bobber and he's chopping the frame about and he's bought himself this massive expensive jig which the guy obviously hasn't got a clue what he's doing with it and then he was he was trying to put the front end back in the bike so the fork front mud guard uh, the wheel everything all in together at the same time and the way he was doing it was he he suspended the entire rest of the bike by, by the steering stem with a, a tie thing, you know, ratchet strap from the ceiling. So the whole thing's wobbling about like this, and every time he's shoving the forks in, that almost falls over, and it's just comical to watch. No thought behind it at all. So you start watching people like that, and you instantly know they're they're just an amateur who's feeling his way in the dark, basically. Um, are those the people that you're really going to follow? Well, not me, sorry to say. I didn't subscribe to that channel. <laughs> you see people trying to do an engine tear down, they see the crank sticking out of the engine, so they're bashing it with a five pound club and they're trying to knock it all the way through, thinking it's just a pin. Baffles the hell out of me. But anyway. So, but Andy's channel is, um, he's very considered in what he does. He, he takes the time to explain things in a way that I can understand. Might not work for everybody, but it does for me. Love it when he gets out his little sketch pad and just starts drawing stuff, because he explains it really well. Um, and you just know that he knows what he's talking about, and you suddenly have the confidence to follow what it is that he's doing. He does say, um, it's not how-to series. 
He does say that it's just the way that he does things, it's very subjective. And if you follow him and get it wrong, then that's on you, which is fine. But just looking at the way he works, he does know his stuff. Definitely. Right. So that's all the cars sorted. Hoorah. Anyway, um, I did message Andy uh, just to make sure he's okay for me to include him on the channel. Say a little bit about his channel, what he does, all that kind of stuff. Which he very graciously agreed to. Um, as long as I didn't call him a prick, which I haven't done and I'm not going to. He's a good man. <laughs> uh, he is Australian so you have to forgive him. He lives in Tasmania, I can't believe it. Um, anyway, so yeah, the, the links in the, you know, the clicky thing, go and check him out. I'll put a description, a link in the description rather as well, so you can go and have a look at his channel. Um, but it is well worth it. I, I personally learned an awful lot from it. Um, he doesn't know that, and I'm not telling him either, because he'll get a big head and stuff. But it's, uh, yeah, solid channel, one well worth watching. What I'm going to be doing is... Um, as we go through this, there's, there's a handful of channels which I found to be really, really good. I mean, not well, really good. Um, and it could be through their explanation of how something works, or fabrication skills, or you know, just understanding the theory of something, or just a very impressive bike build. Um, as as we come time to um, kind of practice what they preach. Uh, I'm going to do something like this and tell you about the channels and recommend you go have a look see. Um, I was grubbing around for I don't know, a year and a half just looking at different videos before I started doing all this. Um, so for, for me, I know which ones I trust and which ones I don't. Um, so I'm not going to mention the ones I don't because they're just, well I suppose you get comedy value out of it. Some of them are hysterical, uh, but the, the good ones, the, the ones that are really informative and the ones that helped me, I'm going to include in this. Um, the next one we're probably going to be mentioning um, is going to be the fabrication series, actually, with Justin. Um, I've sent him a, a message as well, seeing if he's okay with being included in this. Um, to which he's very graciously said yes, I just can't use any of the content of these videos which is fine. I know how much work goes into them. Um, but Justin is a world of fabricator. Uh, he lives in Las Vegas, middle of a sandbox. Um, but one of the cool things that he did is one of his really early videos, actually. Um, uh, he does all the tube bending. Uh, he used to make um, time attack roll cages and he did a video series on how, how they're all put together and how you work out the bends and the angles and various other bits and pieces. And he literally, in one series, built an entire roll cage in situ in the car, welds it all up, finishes it up, and it's he does a really good job, really good job. Um, and it's one of those go-to videos that, that I keep um, all about tube bending and how you knot pipe and all that kind of stuff. Really, really good. And we're going to be using some of that to make the seat hoop and the frame stays and a few other bits and pieces and stuff as well. Nowhere near as much as he goes through. Um, but like I say, the cool thing is, is that he takes you through from start to finish. So every aspect of building that cage is covered and he does it in detail. Um, so in the, in the next video, you'll see a link um, to his playlist um, like I said he's graciously said yes that we can we can reference him which is brilliant thank you very much Justin um, and you see just how good the guy is he's he's obviously been doing it for years the series is shot in his garage I believe um, and he's since moved into like this massive workshop and everything else he's got all the cool toys so he's obviously doing quite well for himself knows what he's doing and that's kind of proof of it, really, because his channel's growing and his premises have grown and he's got a lot more toys to play with. But anyway, so the next one's all going to be tomb bending. So, um, what was I doing? Yeah, um, you don't live there. Right. Uh, 
So the plan is, uh, Sivo's coming up this weekend, down this weekend, because we're in Plymouth, he's our country. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to get some steel in. We're going to mock up the top frame tube for you know for the seat tube, so we can sit it on there with the weight of the engine in the bike, so it can decide at what sort of angle he wants to have everything. The engine needs to come out of the bike because I need to get a grinder to the frame and cut tabs off and start welding and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to stick the engine on a dolly so he can wheel it outside and clean it off and do whatever he wants to do with the engine. The engine's all him, he wants to do that which is fine. And I'm going to start on the fabrication of the seat frame. Um, after that we've got a few tools to make as well because I need to make a box pan break um, so we can make up the under tray. And I'm also, I really want to have a go at making my own seat unit but doing it out of metal. So, shrink a stretch of time, see if we can't make something up, which is in keeping. Um, so yeah, next week we'll be getting into the fabrication. Um, should be good, actually, I'm quite looking forward to that. I'm a welder fabricator by trade, um, that's the day job. So it's kind of what I know, however, I've not done anything like this before, it's all been in cabinets and hangers and stuff like that, so it'll be interesting. But anyway. I hope you can join us for that one. I hope you find all this stuff entertaining. Um, if you do, obviously, there's the subscribe option. You can do the bell. You'll get notified every time we upload another video. Um, and, you know, tell your mates about it. The channel's tiny at the minute. I think I'm still in si single digits for subscribers. Um, I'd obviously like to more. I think that would be quite cool. That would be very cool. Seven is not a good number. Anyway, but it's in its infancy, I understand that. So, if you do like what you see, the option's there for you to subscribe, tell your mates about it, point them in our direction. We'd love to welcome everybody here. If you've got any comments, brilliant. Um, and, yeah, hope to see you next time. Take it easy.